We have reports that the Grammy-winning singer, Whiskey, has again mourned the loss of his mother, Mrs. Morayo Balogun, in his latest collaboration with Ashake called MMS. Now, in his verse, Whiskey shared his emotional journey since his mother's passing. He revealed that he lost himself but found his purpose, singing about accepting his destiny and finding solace in his daily life despite the pain of his mother's absence. Recall that Whiskey's mother passed away on August 18, 2023, that's like a year now, in London, and he has been open about his grief, including a heartfelt tribute on her posthumous birthday. Now, Whiskey has announced a forthcoming album with her name, Moriah, in honor of his late mother, showcasing his emotional connection in her memory. Now, there are lots of things that would happen with people. Some sad events happen with people. And uh, some people, it makes them better. Some people will tell you their breakthrough came when they mention the sad event. Now, the same sad event will happen with someone else and it will break the person to the extent that the person will not be able to do anything again with life. It, it ends there. That's when you ask, where did this crash start? They tell you, this crash started, same sad, sad event. So the same event, two people, two different scenarios. And one would ask, where do they really get it right? What did this other person do that made him turn that sad event into a breakthrough? And then what did the other person not do that, made, that, that, that began that crash in that person's life? We don't usually talk about this all the time, but I believe that it is something that should be addressed. When you experience a loss, it is always heartbreaking, especially when the person is so valuable to you. I have experienced a loss, and I know how heartbreaking it was for me. And I was, I was so sad and um, broken. But I realized that the loss I experienced, God knows best. And God gives, God takes. For me to make that person proud, I have to rise up or wake up every morning and give my best. Because I know that, yes, the person might not be physically present, but anytime the person washes on from heaven, the person will see that yes, this person is doing right, is acting right and is doing well. So for him, he lost his own mother and it's a sad situation. And you know, mothers are so valuable. Except you don't have, even if you don't have a mother, you will not joke with a mother in your life. So I can see, and there's this connection that many mothers have with their sons. Okay. It's, it's not just, um, I think personally, I believe that mothers have more connection with their sons than even their daughters. Because, you know, they, they are, they are, some of their daughters, when they get married, of course, they go to their husband's house. But there's a strong connection between mothers and sons. In most cases, not all, in most cases. And then daughters and fathers. And then daughters and fathers. Like, I have a very strong connection with my mom. It's very strong. She really influenced and shaped. If I can speak today, as I'm doing, it's my mom. If I can teach someone, she taught me first. She molded me. She shaped me. If I can preach and teach and advocate and tell people, be responsible, because I learned responsibility from my mom. She showed us what it means to be a responsible woman and how you should groom yourself, build yourself to become a responsible man by your actions and inactions. So my message is that if you are listening and you have experienced the loss, don't allow it to break you. How do they not allow it to break them? You know, that is that is one big thing. When, when someone, you said you've experienced a loss now. Now, when someone is in that state, they usually don't know what to do. A lot of times, they don't know what to do. They are confused. In that position, they're like, what do I take this decision? Do I do I take this other decision? You know, so at that point, that's when you see them begin to look for materials, look for people to talk to. That's for the ones who really want to come out of it. Some of them crash. They start crashing from that, from that instance. So sometimes they don't. They have no idea on, on what to do, or even how to go about it. That's why you need a support system. You need to have. Uh, 
people around you that love you for who you are, that believe in you despite the loss, that genuinely are interested in you getting yourself back. Because when you experience a loss, it's like something left you. There's a vacuum in you. That's a state of confusion. And that's a state many people fall into depression. Mm. So you need a support system of people around you. And you need to see the other chapter that, yes, there is a loss. That's a chapter. But there's another chapter after the loss. What next? Despair or hope? You can be a message of hope to someone. Like I am always a message of hope because I've been through a loss and I've, caught, I've moved from the chapter of lamentations to the chapter of hope. I, have, I, know I was in the chapter of lamentations because of my loss. But I realized that if I continue to remain in the chapter of lamentations, then I will lament for the rest of my life. So maybe you should tell us how you were able to come out from that chapter to the next. I left the chapter of lamentations when I saw the picture of God's purpose for my life. What nests? What do I do? How do I make this person proud? And the, the, sum, the summary of it is that we are all going to leave this world someday. We are just nothing but pencils in the hand of the Creator. And the time we have on earth should be spent pursuing purpose. Money comes as a byproduct. And when I realized that there is more to life than lamentations, I moved from lamentations to purpose. And that's what gives me joy and happiness. Do I, have I felt pain? Yes. To, did, was I confused at some point? Yes. But did I, will I continue to remain confused? No. I choose not to continue in a class of confusion and depression, but to move to hope. So, so, so how did you, you said you found purpose at that time. Was it like you saw, did you, did you come across a, a material that helped you? Or did you, did you have a dream where you saw the picture of where God was taking you? Because that was what you stated, where you saw that it caused a revolution for you. You know, I, I got that, it's, for me, it's like a personal revelation I got, and that's formed my mission statement and which I'm going to pursue throughout my life. And that is, life is meaningful when you make other lives meaningful. When I got that revelation, I realized that for the fact that your life is meaningful, it does not mean you will not go through challenging moments or you will just be in a very peaceful state. You're going to even be going through crisis at that point. But... When you discover the meaning of your life, you will also help others discover the meaning of their lives. That will make your life meaningful even better more. It will add more meaning to your own life. Because you have discovered that life is meaningful. You help others discover the meaning you know, of their life. Well, I had to ask you how you were able to move from that chapter to another chapter. The truth is, we have had a lot of people who are... They, they've been a source of hope to other people who have been in that situation. You know, it's very easy to advise people. It's very easy to say, oh, do it this way and do it that way until you have experienced it. Now, the reason a viewer who is in that situation might have listened to you properly when you were talking, it could be because you said you have been there. So it's easier to explain and, you know, theoretically when you have never been there. But then in a situation where you are there, so what I'm trying to say is people who are giving hope to other people who were in that situation, when it happens to them, they suddenly do not know what to do. So it, you then realize that it goes beyond theory to practical. No, I was even in that state because when I experienced the loss, the person I lost was someone I was so close to, someone that's so loving, and then I lost the person. Someone who has been a strong support system to my life and destiny. So I was in a state of confusion and hopelessness. And until one day, right, when I got this you know, revelation, I would say, and God began to make me understand that one of the ways you can make this person proud is by pursuing your purpose in life. Because one day you two will leave. So if you spend the rest of your life lamenting, you will lament all your life without actualizing your purpose. 
So that's it. So that, that's caused a shift in my mindset. So when you have that ideology of, okay, I need to make this person proud. You yes. Know, probably after you have left that place of... Lamentation. Um, yes, lamentation where you're blaming yourself. You know, a lot of people do that. When, when they lose loved ones, they somehow just believe that it was because of them. And that's the worst place that um, anybody could be. But when you then have that realization, what is the first step you take? What are some of the things that you should be doing during that journey that will help you come out of that phase completely? You need to, that's why you need to have a support system that will, that will be with you there. And then apart from the support system, you need to have a daily reminder. Write down your mission statements in life. And that should be the first picture you see every morning. That's, there should be something. You know, if you go to some people's houses or rooms, you see nude pictures on their walls and paintings. <laughs> oh, get a picture and place it. The first thing you see in the morning should be that picture so that it will remind you that, see, life is short. Make a meaning of it and make other lives meaningful. My own mission statement is life is meaningful when you make other lives meaningful. And that's why I'm here. And that's why we are doing this. So let's talk about the support system now you've talked about. That, that's a very broad statement now. Getting a support system, what exactly are the options that you are referring to? The support system, for me, I'm a Christian. And you can be a Muslim, you can be whatever. Those people in your religious fold can form your support system. Good, genuine friends can form your support system. Sometimes when you are confused, it's not about strong man or strong woman. Talk to someone. Sometimes pour out your burdens to someone who can listen to you without judging and condemning you. Who can give you a listening ear without saying you are weakling or you, 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 you know, you are not, you are just, you are too emotional. Mm. No. Sometimes express yourself to that person who will give, pay, give, give you a listening ear, who will pay attention to you, who will pray for you, who will share in your tears, not only in your money, who will be there in your weak moments to give you uh, words of encouragement. I mean, it's even important to have somebody like that in your life. You need someone like that in your I life. Because I remember a post I saw on Facebook where a lady w was talking about someone who reached her out of the blue. She doesn't know this person. And the person just started pointing out all his problems and everything to her. And she, she made a statement in that post. She said, whenever she sees people like that, she, oh, she's always taking her back because she's like, does it mean in your life you don't have anybody that you can talk to. So it means that there are people who are like that. There are people who do not, who probably do not have anybody that they can trust enough, you know, to, to open up that vulnerable part of them. Uh, kind, being kind, sometimes um, there's no how you not get such people. Like, even if you're listening, I w let me give you a particular example quickly because of our time. I was walking on the road one day, just not too long, last week or there about, and a marketer met me and approached me and he wanted to, he was marketing his product and all that for me. And I, I, the first words, the first word, the first things that came out from his mouth, he, he, was, he was so kind. You know, he approached me so nicely. And I told him, he said, I might not buy your products, but I encouraged him. But I, I want you to keep doing your job well. I shared some words. He will never forget that in his life. No, I've planted a seed of hope in him. I told you that I like the way you're doing your marketing. Keep it up. So that's it. So meet someone. There are so many help support organizations, and they will listen to you. And then books, because you didn't talk about materials. There are good you books, and I can't mention all of them. No, no, we can't mention books, but... Yeah, there are books, there are individuals, there are good programs you listen to. There are good music you listen to. Not music that will bring you... There are good uh, communities. There are communities of like minds or people who have come out from that problem or that challenge that will be there to counsel you and encourage you and when you see them doing well it gives you it motivates you to want to do well so that's okay so that's for one thing i know that you have stated is the fact that uh, what what helped you out of that was considering the fact that you needed to make that person proud yes and it helped you come out of it so we've been talking about the two scenarios of one sad event happening to two two different people and one person it becomes his breakthrough but then the other person becomes his crashing point and then the question was how do you know 
what did this person do that made it his breakthrough point and what did this person do that made it his crashing point and the imam from personal experience has been able to explain to us how he came out of that situation at that time when he was there thank you so much Dema Emmanuel George Thank you.